Are you a god? No. Then die. And welcome back to the Retro Review. I am the Bearded Geek. Joining me as always is Mikey the Freak. What's up? And Steve. Yeah! What's going on? <laughs> nope, today we are going to be reviewing the movie Ghostbuster. Mikey the Freak, why don't you tell us a little bit about this movie? I never watched it. Na, 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 uh, na, na, okay, Bebo. Oh, yeah, all right, Bebo, yeah. In <laughs> honor of Bebo. Um, so I, I'm just going to I'm gonna read off of, uh, off of IMDb uh, and we'll go into it a little bit more. Three parapsychologists forced out of their university uh, funding set up shop as a unique ghost removal service in New York City, attracting frightened yet skeptical customers. So okay. it's, it's kind of good on a premise, like kind of your basis behind it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got uh, three cast of characters with like, uh, Egon. Uh, Stans and Bankman all get kicked out of their university because they basically the pro, um, professor, I guess the, um, dean, uh, the dean. dean, Dean, sorry, yeah. <laughs> see, I don't go to college. Dean, it was uh, Dean Wormer. Yeah, you see, I'm I'm just kidding. That's Animal House. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you they get kicked out of their college. They don't get any more funding because they haven't really proven anything that their psych their parapsychology or their, their tests aren't holding water. So they don't want to give them any more money. So they went out and did their own business. And, you know, one thing leads to another, they go one ghost to two ghosts and they, they're hot. They're on fire now. Cause they are ready just... to believe you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's um, been a fun run as a co-host here. Back to the <laughs> retro review. Uh, but no, it, it, it was a great movie through and through. Um, you know, they they meet these cast of characters. Sigourney Weaver shows up, uh, Dana Barrett, uh, and she gets possessed by the gatekeeper, Keymaster. No, she's the gatekeeper. She's the gatekeeper. gatekeeper. Yeah. I was right the first time. I always get them confused. I don't know why. It's not that hard because it's a very much physical representation of the roles. Yeah. Lewis Tully is the key master and she is the gatekeeper. <laughs> and then the key <laughs> goes in the gate. And, <clears throat> and on yeah. that note, uh, <laughs> Steve, what about <laughs> On that note, Rick Moranis is in the movie as Lewis Tully. <laughs> oh, well, so what much fun we have. Uh, uh, a yeah, role, A role that was originally meant for John Candy. Not one of my fun facts, just a fun fact. John oh, Candy. John Candy and, oh, if you didn't know that, yeah, John Candy was originally yeah. supposed to be Lewis Tully. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it turns out they're both ones a key master. Key, key master one's a gatekeeper and <laughs> we're back to that subject uh and they have to wait for the return of zul uh which is your main uh evil character in this uh movie uh they meet up on the rooftop of the building which the building was made back um by a they kind of explain it a little bit a crazy um man say, i can't remember the name say, of it a gozer you say, say a gozer say worshiper satanic. yeah gozer, gozer worshiper the, the worshippers of gozer but they, and they, they build were basically the a demonic building, cult. yeah mm -hmm. they build the building where it's a uh, a ghost um uh attractor i think that's what they was they were saying basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh you know come yeah, to yeah, find yeah. out yeah 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 Sounds to uh, me like someone didn't watch the movie and pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I watched the movie, <laughs> but it's very hard to explain when you want to go through so much details, and we don't really spend that much time on it. <laughs> short, sure, sure. short, and, short and sweet to the point. But yeah, yeah they uh, they have Just a like figure. Me. They have a figure that they have to think about. Um, that the the man was the name. I can't now. I'm lost. I'm lost. The name. Um, the, the destroyer. Yeah, those are the those destroyer. are the destroyer. Pick so they, your choose. They thought they about it for the your... Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showing up. 
it's it's basically whatever you thought of would be the destroyer mm -hmm. and they were like clear your head clear your head and and it's like yeah, yeah we, it's it has been picked and then no, no, was like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. i didn't think of anything did you, did you think, think of anything did you, did you think, think of anything that? ray uh -huh. it's, i just i just thought of of boy scout camp <laughs> and us sitting around the fire and roasting the marshmallows something that'll what never you do something that'll could never do. <laughs> could do i love uh, the delivery of the line too here's the stay puffed marshmallow man this day took much longer. Like, oh, shit. All right. Uh, so, uh, Steve, what'd you think of the movie? I love yeah. the movie. Ghostbusters is great. Who are you going to call? Like, it's a, a classic 80s, <laughs> perfect Bill Murray. Uh, it's it's a, a fun, you know, action-packed, comedy-filled uh, movie. It, mm -hmm. what it would, it's got it's got a little bit of a jump scare. You get Slimer. You get the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. You get other little ghosts here and there. Uh, you get a nipple slip from Sigourney Weaver that I've known about for yeah. years. I just uh, found out. Yeah, you get a ghost blowjob. So. You do get a ghost blowjob, which is which is as far as I know, semi based off events that Dan Aykroyd actually went through dan Aykroyd is very big uh believer in the paranormal uh and alien world you are you are having like you are finding this out for the first time bearded geek yeah a little bit yeah oh yeah, yeah i didn't know that either he has done a lot of paranormal podcasts yeah 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 he's big into the paranormal world uh and very much has been for many years and that's what's actually inspired him to write the movie uh was personal paranormal experiences that he had been through in his life Oh, okay. Um, I love, love I, I obviously love this movie. Uh, I actually recently made the horrible decision of matching <laughs> of matching my shining tattoo, which mm. has been uh the, the most painful tattoo I have. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side, uh, but I'm going to do a proton stream. Oh, that'd be cool. That'll be cool. And that and that is going to be my Ghostbusters tattoo because I was trying to figure out what i could do with that either that or i'll put a i'll put a ghost trap right here and then i'll have the beams coming up for like it's like catching a ghost and that'd be cool yeah i'll put like the ghost yeah. of my dead brother or something i don't know <laughs> yeah someone that okay. i know that's died it'll be great it's funny i think death a is memorial tattoo. I'm sorry yeah. could, oh, you could call it a moment sure sure yeah. i'll do even better i'll pick someone that's alive now and turn them into ghosts for a referendum. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. It'll be great. My mother in law will love it. It'll be the perfect tattoo for her. <laughs> She'll will... never see this. She'll never see this. All right. Well, I enjoyed this movie as well. Bearded um, Geek, what did you think about this movie? <laughs> I thought this movie was great. Um, the special effects for the 80s, yeah, they don't quite hold up to what we have today. But for then, I thought that they were really cool. Um, you know, some of the effects um, at like the when it's daytime and they try to do the ghostly effects, like when the, the ghosts were swirling around the building, that looked really bad. Like, I didn't care for that at all. Uh, but like Slimer, Slimer was a great effect. Uh, uh, Slimer was a physical effect. Slimer wasn't CGI. It was an actual big creature. And okay, well, the proton pack uh, streams and stuff that the the way that they caught the ghosts um all that stuff was really cool um yeah. even the building explosion at the end of the movie where you can see ron jeremy uh that was really <laughs> cool um you could see ron jeremy but not ron's jeremy uh, all right uh this was a this was a you know just a classic fun movie that's very quotable like quote this movie quite a bit like somebody when it is true. Sees, it yeah. is true. It is true, Your Honor. This man has no penis. Somebody blows their nose, <laughs> and you want to keep it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> all sorts of and a, a lot from um, uh, Bill Murray. Like Bill Murray has oh, yeah. a lot of one-liners in this movie. It seemed like Bill he Murray, was the one grabbing Bill all the attention in this movie. If you if you watch this movie when when Dana Barrett first shows up to the Ghostbusters uh, headquarters, he jumps over the railing oh, and, and he, he almost actually falls. he almost oh. biffs it. You catch you see his foot catch, yeah. and the only that. reason he doesn't biff it is because the part that he's hitting is actually a rotating swiveling door, mm -hmm. so it gives a little of a of a thing. But if if that were firm, 
he he would have busted his he ass. He, oh, yeah. he would have hundred oh, yeah. percent, hundred <laughs> percent. Right, let's go into ratings, Mikey the Freak. What do you rate this movie, sir? Um, I, that's really a solid movie. I mean, I let, I did love the movie even for the eighties. Uh, we you know we talked about the special effects. Um, the the ghosts were interesting in throughout the movie. Um, I, I always love Rick Moranis. I always see him as Spaceballs, but this was mm-hmm. four years before Spaceballs even came out. Um, so his comical type uh, uh, bring to the to the movie was actually pretty good and I love, nerdy. I love how he <clears throat> always locks himself out of his own apartment. <laughs> yes, I love that running running punchline. Uh, uh, they said they gag. said that your TV was up real loud, so I just turned my TV over real loud to make her think that, that her TV was broken. Yeah. yeah, everything, all the TVs in the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I, I like that part, of it, and I loved what he brought to the movie, um, and in Sigourney Weaver's uh, character and what she brought to the actual movie itself. And yeah, um, being that you know Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and even Harold Ramis were all in their prime in the, in the mm-hmm. mid eighties. Um, uh, I think that's what made this movie a hit. Uh, so I'm going to give it a solid eight. Soundtrack all the way to, around. Soundtrack to the, da, 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 da. I mean, classic yeah. soundtrack. It fit the movie so well. Bobby, One Brown's, of the... Bobby Brown's rap for Ghostbusters two is better. Never, never have you yes. had a better line of too hot to handle, too cold to hold. They called the ghost butchers and they in control. And then he talks about something about putting their protons on their back and they split. Like you, you can't even um, Ray Parker Jr. can get out of here. No, to the, to I the am genius of Bobby Brown. Give me Bobby the Ray Buster Parker Jr. Jr. version, please. <laughs> but Ray Parker Jr.'s was a one hit wonder from the 80s and probably one of the most, most iconic soundtrack songs and of course it was made just for ghostbusters yeah. and they had so many cameos in the actual music video this is true um i, I think that's really where they probably blew all their spending <laughs> on the music blew video the on the on the video yeah but yeah i'm gonna give it a solid eight uh steve now, what about yourself now before we move on uh, now since there is a nip slip does this get a boo bump no because i think because it's too fast the no boo bump no, not for me. Okay. It was too fast of a nip slip. It was almost you have to pause it to see it and then 100%. go. And so. Okay. I don't know what a boob bump is, but it, does, it doesn't get a boob bump for me. A boob bump is uh, the movie gets at least an extra half a point. point. Copy, copy. Just, yeah, if yeah, it yeah. shows boob. <clears throat> no, I've known about this one for years, so it's never been a boob bump moment for me. Uh, Halle Berry and Swordfish, <coughs> that's, a boob, that's a boob bump. Yeah. Oh, that's a solid one bump. That's yeah, one, that's yeah, a yeah, one yeah, point yeah. increase. Yeah, that's yeah. a half a point for each. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm a big fan. Uh, I don't normally I don't normally share, but uh, I had a buddy when uh, Harold Ramis passed. Uh, my buddy did a sketch card for Harold Ramis, and I actually bought the original, and then I paid for him to do oh, all the cool. Ghostbusters. Oh, that's awesome. I have them, and I have at the end, I have Lewis Tully. <coughs> oh, that's awesome. So... Yeah, that's my buddy. Uh, if you want, if you want to look up him online, a uh, free promotion for Scott Lost. Uh, you look up Scott Lost Art, uh, and he does a comic book, uh, and he does stuff like that. Uh, he does. Uh, he'll take a ticket. Uh, he'll take his uh, his ticket from a movie yeah. and do a bunch of them and do a full page and then do a sketch on top of yeah, that. Send me uh, send me his link that's and cool. I'll put it in the description of the video. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, other than that, oh, cool. it's time for my rating. Uh, I give it a nine. I give it nine. a nine. Like I, it, it's it's a great one. I love this movie. <clears throat> it's one that I remember from my childhood that I would legitimately just play all the time. Uh, I loved Lewis Tully. I loved Peter yeah. Venkman. Uh, I love all. I loved the other characters as well. But as a kid, those were the ones I loved most. Uh, as I grew up, I realized I was an Egon Spangler the whole time. Huh? <laughs> okay. Egon. So, Bearded Geek! Yeah. What's your score for the film? I I think I'm right there with you. I think I'm an, at a nine on this one. Um, it's one of those movies you can sit there and put it on for any age and they will enjoy it. Uh, it has the ghosts are in it are not scary. It they it does have like that one ah! jump, yeah, that one jump scare the first, in the very the first beginning. Get her! Yeah. Get her! Get her! get her right <laughs> yeah that is that's the only like jump scare in the whole movie in, in the whole movie so and it's really not that bad um 
it, and it's just funny. Like the whole movie is funny. So it's yeah. funny. It's yeah. funny. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you're right. I don't think the movie deserved a boob bump, but um, even though I first discovered it on this last watch of it, um, so yeah, nine nine for me. Uh, Steve, do you have any fun facts for this movie? I do have some fun facts for this movie. So in the beginning of the film, with the uh, mingling of Lewis Tully with his party guests commenting on the price of salmon and so on, uh, was one continuous shot and was almost entirely improvised. Nice. Almost none of the scenes filmed were filmed as scripted. Most of them had at least one ad lib. Most of Bill Murray's lines were ad libs. I believe that. I would definitely believe that. Uh, the role of Peter Venkman was originally supposed to be John Belushi. Mm. He unfortunately... such a different movie different movie he unfortunately yeah. passed as dan Aykroyd was writing the script you want to talk about making it a different movie the character of winston was meant to have joined the team much earlier and would have been the one slimed at the <laughs> hotel <laughs> eddie murphy probably but, but when eddie murphy declined the role the script was rewritten to have winston appear halfway through the film yeah I don't think <clears throat> that this would have been the movie it would have been if eddie murphy had been in that role You're right because because um Oh, I just blanked on his real name. Uh, Ernie Hudson mm -hmm. oh, played yeah. the role very serious. And I yeah. think that was the way to play the role. And I don't think it, in the 80s, Eddie Murphy would have been able to play it as a serious character. If somebody asks you if you're a god, you say, yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. And, and the, last one, the last one, which I think is a fun one, is Sigourney Weaver recalled, I once had a fire in my apartment after the movie came out. And the firemen that came in to put it out, one of them opened the refrigerator and said, whoa, you got to call the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That awesome. And those were just some of the fun facts I found about Ghostbusters from 1984. Awesome. 84? Well, yeah. I do have a couple of um, movie High memorabilia. Price. High price movie High memorabilia. Price. We're getting expensive. The last That's couple right. podcasts have been pretty expensive. <laughs> The first item I have is a Ghostbusters Proton Pack movie replica. You can pick yours up for a cool $3,500. Or if you want, just wait until Halloween and they sell an inflatable one for about $19.99. <laughs> Spirit of Halloween does have one for like $300, bucks, but it's nowhere near this uh, this quality. No. Yeah. Um, let's see. You could also get yourself a life-size Ghostbuster Slimer. Uh, this is a one-on-one full-size prop for $3,995. That was my Slimer. I, I, like the sli <laughs> I like the Slimer. I think it looks pretty cool. Dan Aykroyd actually referred to Slimer on the set as, as the ghost of John Belushi due to the mannerism of which he was eating and reminded uh, him of his uh, cafeteria scene in Animal House. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And then we have an original Ghostbusters VHS factory sealed RCA 1985 red border. This is graded at 8.5. Ooh, 8.5. For $7,999.99. But it's like $19.99 shipping. <laughs> so that's oh, no. out. It's completely yeah, it's out. out. Bro, you're already charging me damn near four thousand dollars for a VHS no, no, no. box. Almost eight thousand dollars. Almost eight thousand dollars for a VHS box. Pay, you want me to spring shipping. another twenty dollars for <laughs> yeah. the shipping on a VHS box? You could put it in a basic. You you already have you already have the box around it that's going to yeah. keep it nice and pristine. You just take a seven ninety nine box from the post office. You do you do a little whatever. You don't even need to first class it. Don't even need to press class it. <laughs> little paper on one side, little paper on the other side. You just, it's a $7 box. Covers it itself. Just send me the tracking code. Perfect. But that is all I have from movie memorabilia. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mikey the Freak, what I'm do you have for oh some related God. reels? What do you have for some <clears throat> related reels? All right. So I did go with, of course, there's so many great A plus characters in this movie, A plus mm -hmm. actors. Um, I went with Bill Murray, um, our lovely Caddyshack, which is one of the funniest movies he's been in. 
It's a um, Cinderella story coming out of nowhere. <laughs> former groundskeeper, now so, in the Masters. Well, I did go with your uh, your favorite uh, movie. I did go with Scrooge. So Stephen, I did pick on Scrooge yes. out there. Yes, love uh, Scrooge. And then one of my favorite movies, Kingpin. I mm. put Kingpin on there. That's and then one. two. And then two movies uh, people have probably never seen. The Royal the Tenenbaum. No. The Royal Tenenbaums was one. Uh, and then Rushmore. So both two good movies with uh, Bill Murray. Both Wes Anderson, I believe. Yeah, I guess. Um, went with uh, Dan... <laughs> <laughs> he caught it. Uh, I went with Dan Aykroyd, of course. Uh, one of my favorite movies, Spies Like Us, him and Chevy Chase. Great movie from the 80s. Uh, My Girl, which was actually filmed less than five minutes from my house here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually in Bartow. Where are his glasses? He can't see without his glasses. <laughs> he can't see without his glasses. I believe that house is still for sale, too. Uh, I think so. Last I checked, they the people moved out and they're reselling it again. I would buy it. I would buy it just to see if the ghost of Macaulay Culkin is still there. It is. Oh, Jesus. I'm sure it is. And Our then I'd invite Molly Cook, Macaulay uh, Culkin. What does she live? She lives what? Is it three houses it's, down? It's not. Yeah, it's not the it's ghost of Macaulay Culkin. It's the ghost of Macaulay Culkin's career. Ah, uh, no, that would be oh, that would be yeah, the red true. son. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be. Um, and then uh, I'd put uh, Tommy Boy, uh, which you know he only plays he plays small roles in like yes. Tommy Boy. Mm -hmm. Um, also he plays a lot of small roles in Adam Sandler movies. Um, he's got a real he, he's got a real Michigan accent. He's got a real Michigan accent in that film. Listen yeah. here, boys, I'd really love to help you, <laughs> but I'm the king. I'm the king of auto parts over here. Uh, one of one of my favorite movies too, which is odd that no one has probably seen either, is Nothing But Trouble. He plays Gilman. more than one role in that movie. <laughs> he does. He plays several <laughs> roles in that movie. I just remember uh, him with his the nose penis is nose. a penis. Yeah, the penis, penis nose. nose. Uh, and then um, Sneakers, a movie called Sneakers. That's yes, a very good movie. I too. love Sneakers. I love That's sneakers. a cast. That's a great movie. You want to talk about Robert Redford, Sidney Poitier, River oh. Phoenix. We got David Stockholm. We got we got Dan Aykroyd. You got uh, uh, Stephen Loeb, uh, Tobolowski. Dude, such a good movie. Yeah, I love, Tobolowski. I love Sneakers. Uh, yeah, uh, Bearded uh, Geek, if ben you haven't Kingsley. seen Sneakers, that's good. Okay, I'll check oh, it out. Is a good movie. I'll check it Sneakers out. Sneakers is so good. Uh, and then my last one is Sigourney Weaver. Uh, so, of course, I did the basic Alien, which is mm -hmm. in, like, every Alien movie out there. Um, your hands off of her, bitch. A Avatar, where they have sex with their tails. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went with uh, Bearded Geek's favorite, uh, Galaxy Quest. I had to do Galaxy Quest. <laughs> it gets off on that fucking movie. I love that movie. I know. Uh, and then another movie that I actually enjoy uh, with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost was Paul. <laughs> I thought Paul was actually an interesting movie. Better, uh, but that's not better, better, uh -huh. better films to, to choose than that that star Simon Pegg and, and Nick Frost. But Sigourney yeah. Weaver's not in them. Me for no, Sigourney he, Weaver, I would have gone with Cabin in the Woods. Yes, Cabin in the Woods was a good. I love Cabin in the Woods. It's a good you movie. Could e you could even go Finding Dory. Or Hole. She was in Finding Dory? Yes. Hello and welcome. Oh, she was to the voice the you're right. Oh, you're right. She was the voice well, of. Uh, she's of the, the announcer aquarium. of the aquarium. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Steve, where can people find you on, in your podcast? You can find me at the last podcast you'd want. We uh, did not have an episode come out this week. Uh, so there'll be an episode coming out next week. Oh, I, this is actually time traveling yeah. so we have an ep we, we try and have an episode uh once a week sometimes we don't it's it's not my fault i'd like to have it out once a week uh other than that uh you can find us at the last podcast you'd want uh you can find us on instagram at the last podcast you'd want uh, you could follow our twitter if you want at tlpyw that's it tip the veal try the staff I'll see you next week all right as we come to a close do all the youtuber things give us a good old thumb in Hit that like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell us what you thought of this movie. Da -da 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 Ghostbusters. You know, tell us what you thought. Uh <laughs> tell yeah. us what you thought. <laughs>
<laughs> so for Mikey, the, yeah, so for Mikey the freak and Steve, I am the bearded geek. Stan, keep it retro, everybody. Peace.